Okay, can we just start by saying congratulations, Freya? Oh, you got thank married. Thank you. I did. Hey. Thank you so much, Owen. That's very kind of you. Yeah, it's it's a happy ending to the last three years, which the album kind of documents. But it feels like a rom com with a happy ending for once. I love a rom com, but yeah. Yeah. Very, so very was happy. it uh, was it a, a a quiet wedding? Was it was it a? It was uh, small. Yeah. Very right, family okay. orientated, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and my mo- it- my mother in law is from Belfast, so she'll be Ooh. excited I'm talking to you. And All I right. actually have a lot of my my grandparents from Belfast, so um. Hi, <laughs> probably related. You've got to give him a shout um, out. <laughs> so they so, were at the wedding. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah, she was at Did the wedding. Did they behave themselves? Yeah, no, great crap. We had a Kaylee. We actually had a Kaylee afterwards. So it was like a proper proper kind of Celtic Celtic vibe for the day. But we had the best time. It was very, very small. And it was like we planned the wedding in about two months because I I didn't think we'd have time really. Because I thought yeah. we would be releasing music last year, but it's brand new, fresh year, so I'm happy to be releasing music again. And was it show busy at all? I know. You oh no, hell no! Busy. I don't I haven't no. even shown anyone any photos. I get I'm weirdly shy about it. I'm weirdly protective. I think it's because like with the album being so open about so much that it feels like when it comes to that day, we're just kind yeah. of weirdly like private on this on the pictures. But I feel like when it comes to the story of you know the album and what led us there, I'm just an open book at this point. Yeah. Uh, we'd like to congratulate you. you on the. The new single, Weekends. Thanks. Of course, Blood Orange. Yeah. So That's Weekends so is out now, isn't it? Weekends yes, Weekends is out now. now. Yeah. And uh, Blood Orange is out on the 5th of May. 5th of May, yeah. Right, of okay. International so, Star Wars Day. Yeah. Do you want to tell us all about Weekends and then tell us all about the album? So basically, yeah, Weekends is, I'd say, one of the first songs we wrote for this album. And it's kind of at the beginning of the story of Blood Orange, which is is basically it's the last three years of my life put into an album genuinely it's like it's all completely true and it's just it's been such a journey so it's sort of yeah weekends began where I was going through a very very probably one of the worst breakups of my entire life and I was really really struggling to like to hide how lonely I actually was but I was really scared that my ex would see me playing shows to like thousands of people and think that I was you know raving it up every night when that could not have been further from the truth and for me, it was like, it just felt so taboo to even say, like I sort of whispered it into my iPhone straight from my subconscious. I think I was on tour somewhere and I was like, I am never showing anyone that. That is so embarrassing. Um, but basically it just sort of stayed with me and it didn't leave. And I was like, because it felt like I'd hit a nerve, like internally, I was like, I need to, I need to get this out in some way. I want to be brave and I want to show people. And I was doing a session with Steve Mack, who is one of my favorite producers of all time. And mm-hmm. um, we did a session and I was quite, I was quite scared to do the session, but he was like really, really lovely. And he said, what have you said to yourself recently that has like scared you to say? And I was like, oh, I'm not going to show him. And then I was like, I have this voice memo. And he listened to it and he's like, that is so sad. <laughs> and I was like, yes. Um, and I didn't want to show anyone, but he's like, what if we turn that really melancholic, very, very sad idea into like something euphoric and we bring, you know, I said I really wanted a, I was very strong. I wanted a, like a strong 70s element to this album. Like I wanted it to be quite like organic and euphoric. But he was like, should we try a disco element? And I was like, well, that's out of my comfort zone. Let's try that as well. So this song is just me just jumping over the fears that I have one after the other. Um, and now it feels like a euphoric celebration that I kind of overcame that time. But at the same time, like, I think it transports you back there as well, just to remember it's like, you have when you know in a, when you're going through a breakup you've lost your best friend and you know you know that person that you call at the end of the day and like talk to mm-hmm. you about it and that loneliness it does it hits you like a truck um so i wanted to be brave and that's where the beginning of this story begins and i'd say that this album blood orange is an album of two halves it's two very clear 18 month halves one where okay. i was very heartbroken and alone and struggling and the other one where I was falling in love, allowing myself to be happy and overcome the fears of like actually letting myself be loved by someone. Well, it sounds like a very interesting story. Thank you. Yeah. Hopefully, yeah. Well, basically, it's a, it's a breakup and a makeup album. So, yeah. <laughs> All Let's in take one. You back to 2017, Lost Without You mm-hmm. was, I suppose, the first major breakthrough hit, wasn't it? It was. Uh, yeah, 100%. Then- yeah in in 2017 tell us the story Mm. behind loss without you um you in the back of the taxi yeah i remember i was going through probably at that time one of the worst first heartbreaks i'd ever been oh dear 
Um, oh my God. And base- you're as, I know, you're as bad as they Adele. Me, don't they? they really follow me. <laughs> and I was like, I was crippled by it and I didn't know what to do. Um, and basically I shut my eyes and this song came out like fully formed. And I was just like, it kind of, it felt like it came from somewhere bigger than me. And I still don't really remember how it happened, but I remember I wrote it almost in one go. Um, and like my dad came in and he's like, what was that? And I was like, I don't know. That was just, I, I haven't experienced that. Like, especially like the little, the little whale bit at the end. I was like, I don't know where that came from, but it was, it was what was happening to me at the time. And it just felt like it came from this place of truth. But then it was like years of me, you know, I didn't show it to anyone. And then I started playing it around open mic nights around London um to sort of deafening indifference and I was like heartbroken I was like I really believe in this song there's something about it that just it it kills me when I sing it like it gets me so like it makes me want to cry every single time and I kind of almost gave up on it I was like I I love it but I don't think anyone else is going to okay and then I got signed by this um amazing indie label who was like let's actually put out the ballads and I was like really you you guys want to actually put out my ballads really um and so it was they put it out in 2017 and then again it was it was out for nine months before the love island moment happened so this song had been around for a while and i'd kind of almost given up on it ever Mm. i was just grateful for what it had done for me and then it just this lightning bolt struck and love island the moment happened and just something just exploded and it just went into like turbo drive and i was like this is so surreal because i've this song has been like my friend for so many years and no one really cared about us and now it's like we get to perform on these massive stages and sing this song with like yes like tens of thousands of people and i was like it's just surreal it's like something out of a film you know you walk out onto glastonbury and like this wave of like this energy hits you in the chest and this roar and you're like oh my god like this is so cool um, so I had, yeah, I have huge amounts of gratitude for what that song did for me because it, it kind of saved me. It really did. Speaking of uh, Glastonbury, uh, you you were performing in, was it Bristol that you were performing in? And uh, yeah, we visit from a guy called Michael Evers. I remember uh, I looked down at the front row and I was like, wow, because there was a lot of like yeah. young girls. And um, and I was like, oh, that guy looks like, I was like, maybe he's someone's like like grandpa or something, but he looks like he's having the best time of his life. I was like, God, I want to so be that you, cool you when I'm this age. You didn't recognize. Well, I was on stage and I didn't quite, it didn't quite click. I was like, I feel right. like I know that man. But I didn't. I was like, maybe he's like a friend of my dad or something. I, like, I don't know. <laughs> um, and then afterwards, like, I came backstage and I was like, and I saw the shorts. And this was like in the deepest like depths of winter. And I was like, short. Sure. Right, okay. like, oh, like, yeah. yeah, no, but he like lives in shorts all year round. I'm like, oh my God. It's like, you are like an icon. Um, and we just <laughs> had like the best chat ever. And he's just such an incredible man because his genuine love for music is just visceral. You're like, he... That's why that whole festival just like it's it's him and his family, you know, they just ripple that genuine love for music. And yeah, I was just I was blown away that he asked me to play a Glastonbury. It was like all my childhood dreams coming true. Me and my dad just like couldn't believe it. Cause we watched it every year without fail. Yeah. So yeah, amazing. And so what was the the experience like then when when you you eventually played Glastonbury? What what was how would you describe was, that feeling? I've never felt nerves like that. Like yeah. I've been nervous before a show, but I've never been mm. nervous two weeks before a show. You went to Brit school as well. What, what was I it did. like following the, the footsteps of those um, icons like Adele and Amy Winehouse? And... Well, they're both like North London girls. And for me, they were my absolute idols growing up. Mm. Like, I I mean, obviously, but for me, I, there's just something about them specifically because they came from the same area as me. And mm. I knew people who knew them. And I was like, oh my God, they're just like... Yeah. just these otherworldly queens and I was so little and they were just yeah my absolute hero so I always wanted to go to the Brit school it wasn't easy for my family to get me there like they didn't really have like the means to do it but um my grandma basically sold everything she had so we could go and wow. stay down there for two years and we didn't have any furniture and we like basically <laughs> we had mattresses <laughs> on the floor we had no wi-fi um and it was it was an intense two years and every month my mom would be like let's just try and hold on for another month and just see you know how much you can learn here because it meant so much to me and I'm not very academic so to be Mm. allowed to get into a music school not based on academic like I didn't have any grades so I wouldn't have been allowed into any other music school but it's an incredible school and it gives people such a wonderful opportunity um and yeah I felt lucky that I got to go there it wasn't exactly what I thought it would be but it was it gave me exactly what I needed so you've been to Northern Ireland before. You, yeah. Before, you? Where did you play in Belfast? Was it? I can't remember. Home? It was in the corner of a really, really cool club. It was like, oh, it was, okay. it was, in, it's a corner stage. I remember that. And we had to walk around the outside of the building to get to the stage. 
Yeah. Um, but I love I love playing in Northern Ireland. I actually have a lot of family from like County Down. Of course. Um, yeah. and Where about County Down? I need to ask my mum, but my grand my grandfather and his, both his parents are from there. Um, and actually, yeah, my my new mother in law is from Belfast, so she'll be excited. I'm talking okay, to. you better give so her a shout out. What's your name? Uh, Marguerite. Marguerite. <laughs> Marguerite. Yeah. Right. See, I mean, can kill you. I mean, you know, you'd be you'd be banned from the house if you don't give her a mention. <laughs> it's so true. <laughs> But I love playing in Northern Ireland. I'd say it's one of the few places where I walk around like on the street and I feel like I can just feel like I'm related to everyone. I'm like, like this is my people. I was like, hey guys. Are you coming back? When are you coming back? Oh, Apart from visiting 100%. Marguerite. <laughs> I know. And her family, childhood home. Let's yeah. think. Well, basically we're in the process of organizing a tour for the end of the year. And I know that we're going to do UK, Ireland, Northern Ireland, 100%. Right. Okay. So I just, I can't wait to come back and see people and show you guys the new show. I've got like, we've got brass, we've got, you know, the band. They're so excited. Very fancy. Know. Yeah. yeah so that's, uh, towards, I feel like it's going to be more euphoric. Yeah. Towards the end of 2023, possibly then. I think so. That's the goal. But maybe there might be some one-off shows and some special like signings and like, you know, acoustic performances as well that we might do. So I just, I can't wait to see you guys genuinely. Like we, some of the tours in Ireland have been my favourite. My favourite. I can't wait ever. to see you too. Oh, listen, I hope you don't mind me asking, but you, you, your dad? Oh, yeah, my dad. Your dad? Yeah. yeah. Richard Ridings? Yes. The actor? Yeah. In quite a few TV shows back in the 80s and, and, and 90s. Mm -hmm. Is it true? Is it true that he is Daddy Pig? Yes, he is the voice of Daddy wow. Pig and Peppa Pig. Yes. Fun fact, but he's, the legend. Yeah, he, he's down the road. He literally lives like he, 10 yeah? minutes down the road. Yeah, I'm having like tea and cake with him literally like this morning. So, so surely um, that makes you a stepsister of Peppa Pig, is that right? Yeah, it's very conflicting for him because I remember <laughs> the day my first album came out, Peppa Pig the album came out and he's like, both my daughters are releasing albums on the same day. Like, who do I choose? I'm like, <laughs> tough to say, Dad, maybe me, but who knows? Home of great music. With Owen Larkin. Downtown Radio.